the sturgeon, a prehistoric dinosaur whose morphological characteristics have remained unchanged since the earliest fossil records. The lake sturgeon is easily the largest fish in the Great Lakes water systems. Some grow over seven foot long and well over 200 pounds. If I didn't know better, I think I was on the bottom. Oh. So angry. Oh. While Michigan is our home state, we've never actually hooked into one of these somewhat rare behemoths. But our buddy Mitch fishes for them quite often and has had some great luck catching them at night. So we're setting off at sunset to try and finally get our hands on one. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. Outdoors Greenway Gear Checklist is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Here's the Greenway gear you're going to need for today's sturgeon fishing trip. Number one, a heavy action rod, preferably seven foot six to nine foot six. Number two, big, heavy, powerful reels to bring in those big fish. Most use line counters, but I prefer spinning reels. Number three, 65 pound braided main line. You're also going to tip that with a five foot, 60 pound fluorocarbon leader. Number four, five to eight ounce sinkers. This will help get the bait down in that heavy current. Number five, a number three catfish hook. These are big and sturdy and good for bringing in those sturgeon. Number six, you're gonna cover that hook in big globs of night crawlers. So you wanna have a whole pallet. Now that we know what we need for today's Greenway Gear Checklist, join us on our trip. I wanted to catch a sturgeon my entire life because not only are they like a prehistoric dinosaur, but also the fact that my grandfather, who he passed away like 35 years ago, but he spent a long time of his life, my dad said, trying to catch a sturgeon, never did. My dad's tried, never got one. So I feel like it's like for my family's namesake, I owe it to them to catch an actual sturgeon. Well, we're with the right guy. I mean, this guy went out, was that last weekend, and he got a, had a tournament, and he won first place. Mitch did? Won $1,500. For first place? Mm hmm How many people were in the competition, though? Because you could win a competition with, like, three people, and that wouldn't mean anything. At least four. <laughs> At least four, okay. <laughs> well, how do you know it's four? He won 1500 bucks. That doesn't mean four. That means at least some. I hope some. I'm sure the entry isn't like, you know. He's caught a hundred dollars. He's caught a sturgeon. Yeah, more than your family can say. <laughs> that was so mean. Your dad wears Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my dad wears Crocs. <laughs> Have seen him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get everything out. What are you getting? I guess nothing. Everything's in the boat. Already. Yeah, we're already good. Did okay. you bring a jacket? I did bring a jacket. I did not. But I did bring a flashlight. I'm not just happy to see you. Was that what that was? <laughs> Going after any new species when hunting or fishing is exciting, but going after a big sturgeon creates a more intense anticipation simply because of their age. A typical male sturgeon might live to be up to 60 years old and a female up to 150. Situations like that always cause me to start doing the math on historical dates. Like, will a fish I catch be so old that it was around during World War II? Or heck, maybe even the year the Titanic sank. Targeting a fish that old and has survived so much automatically demands a certain level of respect. It's like you can't help but feel that the ancient sturgeon in these waters know more about fishing than we do. Now Mitch and I went to work right away with the fish finder, attempting to locate fish. The goal is to find the fish, park the boat upriver from them, 
and then cast the baits back to them. Looks like a good spot, Mitch. Oh yeah, we're set up on one of the uh, local hotspots out here and uh, got the big net for, the, for what yeah, we're going for tonight. quite the net. You know you're going to catch big fish when you got a net that big. Oh yeah. Either that or he's compensating for something. <laughs> he goes, I'm not. <laughs> this is only the second time we met him. Why don't you cool it? <laughs> we're holding now. We could uh, start setting up. So a lot of people ball up night crawlers for that giant fish believe it or not you're going old school with night crawlers and what they'll do is they'll just kind of ball it up but what Mitch likes to do is he actually likes to run it through the head and then kind of keep it on there almost whole so that it hangs off kind of like a Mr. Twister and then it can run that way and it's almost like you got some vibration and movement going on underwater and then the second one same thing he kind of runs it through peeks it out about a half inch down now, the way their mouths work is they kind of just swim along the bottom and they'll, they'll suck up the entire clump of worms, which is why people ball them up. But they're going to suck that up anyways. So to have that squid-like look going on where you got all kinds of twisties and grabbies going on, I don't know why I use the word grabbies, but it's a lot more to movement going on and it's uh, super disgusting. Where'd you cast? Where do you want me to cast? Uh, I just sailed it out that way, so we're going to try and get a spread on the line, so I just uh, throw it out as far as you can to the right, and then... Well, don't say as far as I can, because then if I don't throw it far, everyone's going to know. Oh. Casually throw it out this direction a good distance, but use your best judgment, but not all your strength. These five ounce sinkers are a lot lighter than the uh, ones I run in the front, okay. so after it hits the bottom, you got to kind of uh, walk it back in the current, just to give it a little extra distance, and it should be good. The Greenway Outdoors is presented by Ram Trucks, Motor Trend's back-to-back -back truck of the year. And by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. The Greenway Outdoors Lake Sturgeon Conservation Corner. While Lake Sturgeon numbers are currently on the rise, they are a far cry from where they were just 200 years ago, which isn't very long considering the fish has been around for some 200 million years. Originally caught as bycatch or accidentally by fishermen targeting other species, they were considered a nuisance because they often damage fishing gear meant for smaller species. Not considered viable table fare, they were dried and used for steamboat fuel, fed to pigs, and even used as fertilizer. Once sturgeon consumption gained popularity, especially for their eggs as caviar, commercial fishing exploded with some fisheries providing millions of pounds of fresh fish per year. This insane overharvesting from commercial fishermen and destruction of waterways due to pollution decimated many populations, including the four species of sturgeon now believed to be extinct. However, Thanks to increased awareness and anti-pollution efforts, the sturgeon is back on the rise and benefiting from the new healthy environment. We now have a fishable but heavily regulated population in our home state of Michigan. This improvement is the result of research and stocking efforts from the wildlife management agencies like the Michigan DNR that is funded by the sale of your fishing licenses. In addition to buying your fishing license, support groups like the Lake St. Clair Detroit River Chapter for Sturgeon of Tomorrow. They play a huge role in the restoration of this prehistoric fish. Most hunters and fishermen can draw a correlation between the size of the game and how long it takes to harvest one. Obviously, the giant sturgeon created some time that we had to kill. Hey, I've been out here obviously walleye fishing in the St. Clair River, Detroit River, and stuff like that. I know people catch sturgeon by accident. You catch your first one on purpose, or was it by accident? Uh, no, I've, uh, I've walleye fished quite a few years, and that was always uh, like a bucket list thing of mine. I always wanted to hook one, but I never ended up doing it. So, so you targeted them? Yeah, I started getting into sturgeon fishing about six years ago, and uh, I kind of figured out all on my own and started learning. And uh, it took me about a week of straight fishing to finally catch one and then uh, understand like what yeah to once I kind of got my rigs figured out and uh, found the right waters to set up on and then I started you know getting them every time almost that's crazy you gotta be like until you started filming with us but you said four <laughs> yeah. uh, they've got to be like 42 to 50 to keep but have you ever capped an eight one yes the slots 42 to 50 
Um, you're allowed one per year. Are they any good? I've uh, I've heard not good things. Uh, yes, uh, they are actually very good eating. It's you like a, them? It's a firm white meat. It's kind of like a mixture between a mahi-mahi and a swordfish texture. Right. And then it's all white meat. So it's very delicious whether you grill it, fry it, um, or if you, we, me and my dad like to cut it into squares and we'll boil it in sugar and then we kind of chill it on ice and then dip it in cocktail sauce. It's almost like a shrimp cocktail. Wow. Because the meat's all so right. firm. I was right. not expecting that. I did, that's not at all. It's really like, good. Well, now I want one in the slot. Yeah. It's like, do you want, so let me ask you this then. Would you rather have a 49 incher or a 60 incher? Um, and it's the last day of the season. Didn't catch a di I, didn't I, catch another one yet. I like catching big ones. I, I so you'd always... rather catch. See, the value of catching a big one is more to you than yep. eating one. The, the pitcher for me, it's more of a trophy fish for me. Yeah. I usually I've caught uh, quite a few in the slots this year, but uh, I just let them all go just because yeah. I've had them before and they are very delicious. But um, a lot of times I'm working the next day or on the run, so I usually will put them back. But if you do. Uh, catch one in the slot. I usually bleed it out, and then the meat's like snow white. You flay it, and they have Jeff these, loves that movie. Yeah, they have Not these. They, they have these spines on their back. So uh, when I go to flay them, I take uh, my flay knife, and you can actually slide it right under the uh, the, the plates on their back sure. and just cut them off. Nice. And then I cut the fins off, and then at that point, uh, all of the um, obstructions are off of it. You can just kind of flay it like a walleye and then take the skin off, and it's like a big white flay. They do have um, a little bit of fat on the bottom. It's cut yellow, and then you just cut it off, yeah. and then you got a nice white flay uh, for whatever you want to cook yeah, now it. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Did you bring snacks? No. This was your day to bring We're getting snacks. ready to go to Hawaii. You don't need snacks. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Just saying. Cow, 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 right here. Grab it slow. You just feel for it or? Yep. Yep. Lift it out slow and don't don't agitate it. Just wait. Okay, he popped. He popped again. Give him a good set on the next. Yep, there you go. Just feel decent? Um not not what I would expect for a sturgeon, but. Probably something a little bit smaller. It's a, oh, it's getting, it's getting legs now. Oh. Uh, Could be a catfish. I don't know. Yeah. It's a big cat. Big cat. Man, that's a good cat. That's a nice catfish, man. Catching that catfish really got the heart racing, and it will serve as a great substitute meal if we don't catch a slot sturgeon. But as the 4 a.m. hour approaches, we know we have to head in for the night and come back again. The Greenway Outdoors is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. For the second day, we showed up and we were forced to wait out some rain. But despite the weather, we were in high spirits and ready for round two. Whenever you look at the weather, and it's like there's a 30% chance of rain like there was today, that that 30%, you think like, yeah. it's gonna rain at least some. There's a 70% chance it's not gonna rain. But that's what it's supposed to mean. Like if you went to Vegas and they're like, you have a 30% chance of odds of winning, you'd be like, man, I'm not gonna win. But when it comes to rain and you see 30%, you're like, it's gonna rain at least some. Yeah. I, you know what I think it is? I think it's the pictures that they use. Cause if it's 20%, they don't show raindrops, but at the 30% mark, they show this, the rain on the little, the little logo, and then it's, it's in there, and it's happening. So 30% it is. Yeah, three drops. That's what the picture said. No one asked Jeff. All right, let's roll. We're gonna set right up above these fish and uh, drop the baits right back down to them get about 150 feet upstream from them. I got some waypoints on where I marked them, and then we're gonna position and drop our baits right back to them. Mitch asked that you could please go faster. That would be great. Those boats just seem like there's not, like the back is missing. Like I got chopped off. Where's your hiney? <laughs> this water reminds me of a blue fruit well up. That's really cool. Did I ask that or? Speaking of cool, it also looks like Kool-Aid. See, I take your negativity and spin it to a positivity. 
that answers all the questions I didn't have. <laughs> Look what you're wearing and you're picking on me. You look like Mr. Rogers meets poor. <laughs> Coming from Mr. Street Clothes Power Ranger, I don't think you can talk. If you have spent any time watching our show, it's easy to determine that Jeff and I are lifelong best friends that love to poke fun at each other. Now that being said, we do live by a code, which means that because I already caught a fish, it's technically Jeff's turn. That won't stop me from trying to be crafty. I caught the catfish, so it's technically your turn. But if a fish goes on the spinning reel and I get to reel with my left hand, I shotgun that one no matter what. Why? Because I'm good with the spinning reel and I reel like a weirdo when I have to reel with my right hand. So I shotgun that pole no matter what. For the rest of the trip? I'll get the other ones, you get that one? Not the rest of the trip, no. So after I catch my fish, then we'll swap and then I get the back one and you get the other one. No. No, you can, you're allowed to have every pole set in that one. How about this? How about we both pick a pole where we only get that pole, no matter what, no matter whose turn it is. No but you what. get that one. But I get the spinning wheel one. Did you just have a conversation with Mitch where he was like, oh, but I don't know why we're putting the rest of these out. Like, if we're going to get a fish, it's going to be under that one. No, I don't think so. Mm, I don't think that's, that's not what, what happened. Not what I did. <laughs> Luckily, Jeff wasted no time getting his turn out of the way. It's pretty good. Oh! Jeff, keep quiet. The other boat's gonna try and come over here and take it. Okay, okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'll grab the net. What is it? It's a cat. Big cat. Oh! Didn't get him. Safe release. Still counts. Good. No, 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 that counts. Nope, does not count. That does too count. Didn't get a fish. Doesn't <laughs> count. You fought a fish. Mitch? Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Oh, yep. Yeah. The bite, take it out of the rod holder slow, and then, uh, when you feel him pulling, uh, give him a good set on second or third tug. Oh, I think he's there, I think he's there. Yeah, he's hitting it. All right, on the next one, give it to him. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Yeah, it's not a catfish. No. <laughs> it's a catfish. Yeah, it's not a catfish. Holy cow, he's taking out line, boys. He's running out line right now. Oh my goodness. He's huge, man. <laughs> Dude. You're like, I really just hooked it on the trolling motor. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. I've never been more slimy, but it's worth it for this giant fish. How was that fight? That was nuts, man. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at this prehistoric dinosaur. No change since it's been conceived by God. He came out perfect. He's always been perfect. The weird thing is when you feel him, he's got this rough texture on him. It's almost like sandpaper. And as they get older, uh, the smaller ones have real uh, sharp spines. They grow into them and they become more smooth. Really? Yep. This is incredible. It's about a uh, 65 incher. 65 inch behemoth. Wow. So we're going to have to let this one go. Yep. It's outside of the slot. On today's episode, we harvested sturgeon, an absolutely gorgeous specimen, perfectly designed by God. Every fine-tuned detail on that fish has a purpose, making it perfect for survival. But we humans are also designed by God, but in His image. He knows the number of hairs on your head and the amount of days you have left on this earth. Something special He gave us was free will. We are free to create whatever we want out of this life. It's a giant blessing, but also a giant responsibility. However, you can take comfort in the second chapter of Ephesians, where it says, It is by grace you have been saved, through faith, not by your own works, but as a gift from God.
For today's recipe, we're going to be cooking ancho chili catfish over the grill. For this recipe and many others, visit thegreenwayoutdoors.com. Going out for sturgeon, we only caught one that was well out of the slot, so we're not actually able to eat one. But that being said, we still need to cook up some protein on the grill today. We caught a lot of catfish, and while people don't always like catfish, the people that do always fry it. So I was determined to create a recipe that was slightly more healthy than deep fried, and we're gonna do it today on our Traeger grill. Let's get started. Start by adding hickory big game pellets to your grill and preheat to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then spread your spice mixture paste all over the fish. Taking into account the size of the catfish fillet, you're gonna cook for five to six minutes and then flip and cook for an additional two to three until the meat starts to easily flake away. Once they're ready, pull them off that grill. Serve over a healthy bed of couscous and enjoy. Getting done with this and looking at it, honestly, it looks more like a lobster tail, how it pumps well, up. Well, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> this is, if there was ever a poor man's lobster, I guess it would be the catfish. The spices smell good. I don't think I've ever heard anyone call it that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like how it brings out the flavor. That, a big catfish out of fresh water isn't always known as like mm -hmm. the best tasting fish. But if you cut off the fat and the red and the, all the gross stuff, it's really not that bad. And if you get a sturgeon that just happens to not be in the slot that you need, this is a great alternative. Keep the catfish while you're out there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay green.